will call the meeting to order and state the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We now have time for public input um, on non-service adjustment related items. Oh, that's okay. We now have time for public input on non-service adjustment related items. We'll have an, a time for that after Derek's presentation. Not service adjustment, everything but service adjustment. Yes. You can state your name and address. Right. Um, my name is Mary Jo Apkenorth, 3905 South 10th Street. And I am here because of the cuts to the transportation services. That's um, what we have. Yep. So that's the service adjustment. We'll have time for that. Oh, so you want me to wait. Correct. Okay. I didn't nope, understand. No, that's okay. That. No. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Anyone else? Public comment except for service adjustment. Yeah. But thank you. Yep. Okay, hearing none, we'll move on with the agenda. Um, item 2.1, approval of the minutes from the August 17th, 2021 meeting. Move to approve. Second. All in, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Minutes passed. Okay, item 3.1. Oh, yep, so approval of the third quarter 2021 operating statistics reports. Okay, in your packet you have the IFC for the third quarter uh, operating reports. Uh, starting with Shoreline Metro, uh, ridership was down or is down 7% uh, for the year with revenue up uh, above 57% for the year. Um, COVID and uh, other factors still continue to impact our ridership and our revenue. Um, and just a reminder, like we uh, stated in our last quarter update, uh, CARES Act funds will be used to uh, offset any loss of revenues and potential increases to expenses. Um, for the quarter, uh, revenue trips were 11.46 uh, trips per hour. Uh, this is an increase of the third quarter from last year, which was at 8. Uh, two five trips per hour. On the Metro Connection paratransit side, ridership for the year is up 9%, uh, with revenue up 13%. And again, uh, COVID continues to impact ridership and revenue. And revenue trips uh, were about the same this past quarter, uh, 2.15 per hour, uh, compared to 2.16 uh, last year for the same period. And parking utility numbers, uh, Stall revenue uh, was unable to be updated uh, due to an employee in the finance department out on leave. Um, so I was not able to give you final statistics on the parking uh, revenue. However, um, we still have concerns over the meter and permit revenue coming in. And <coughs> meter revenue has been rebounding nicely from 2020. Um, revenue in 2021 through the third quarter uh, is estimated to be down by 20%. And that is if I calculate um, on your report sheet, about $10,000 for the month of September for stall rentals would uh, take us to about 20% down at this point. Um, so yes, uh, revenue is still concerned and rebounding uh, from the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Otherwise, no other alarms from, uh, from us as far as revenue or ridership. Any questions on the report? Motion to approve the reports. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All, all opposed say nay. Reports approved.
Topic 3.2, 2021 Community Development Block Grant Agreement. So for your consideration is again, the uh, CDBG uh, agreement for 2021. Uh, this is an ongoing grant that we've been uh, awarded uh, annually um, through the federal HUD program. Uh, again, the amount is uh, for $42,493. Um, the agreement is attached uh, for your consideration. There were some changes in the agreement this year, um, but nothing that was uh, alarming at this point. Um, so action required or requested is to support and approve of the agreement and further authorize the Transit Commission Chair to sign the agreement and allow uh, the Director of Transit and Parking to act as a witness. So move, Mrs. Chad. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Motion approved. Topic 3.3, .3, communication from Jean Mueller regarding a parking request. So commissioners, I'm asking that uh, this uh, communication get filed. Um, Chad and I actually had a conversation uh, with the principal of Trinity Lutheran this afternoon, um, and we decided that it was better to schedule an in-person meeting to uh, discuss the uh, parking request uh, with additional personnel. Um, so at this time, uh, we're gonna table the communication and we're going to meet with Trinity Lutheran staff uh, early November uh, to talk about parking solutions. If at that point uh, it's necessary to bring it back to the commission, uh, this item may show up on a future agenda then. I move to file. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion approved. Topic 3.4, service adjustments for Metro, for Shoreline Metro. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> I'm gonna stand down here so I can look at everybody in case you got questions during. Um, be sure there is public input after this item. Um, so before we take any action this evening, um, the action really is to um, file the recommended plans and I hope to provide some additional uh, information for you. Uh, the commission will consider public comments uh, related to this item um, after uh, my presentation. <clears throat> so first things first, I wanna just bring up uh, several of the facts uh, surrounding our adjustments. Um, I personally, my staff, we all understand the livelihoods are being impacted with this. Um, <clears throat> we're in a very difficult time, folks, and that's uh, really the, the, the part of it right now. We understand there are issues on both sides. We understand customers uh, are facing uh, reduced service. We understand that drivers are having to work uh, long shifts or split shifts. We, you know, and I uh, sympathize with everybody. I'm very empathetic about this. This has not been uh, easy on me by any point uh, for the last uh, several months. Um, you know, I take these challenges personal. I, I wasn't hired to run a transit system to cut service. Um, I, was run, I was hired to create a transit system that could expand service and expand to more customers. Unfortunately, there are factors uh, that are out of our hands at this point, and there is no perfect solution. So just starting out, we do not have the current staffing level to continue current services. <clears throat> we face a very limited application for drivers at this point, um, and consideration is that when we do hire drivers, it takes two to three months to simply onboard and uh, train them. In 2022, February to be exact, uh, there are new training requirements coming from uh, the federal government, and we are working uh, proactively to uh, continue to be able to train drivers in-house and meet those requirements. Um, so we are facing another challenge early next year if we are not able to become a training site or a training facility, which would force us to further look uh, to train drivers elsewhere and could be a significant distance from our current location. We currently cannot meet driver vacation requests. Um, we are uh, deep in uh, driver vacation requests, especially during the holidays. Um, with a significant concern that um, if driver requests were denied, especially for those that have appointments or schedule with family or leaving town, um, that calling in sick could be an option. 
Um, we've already arranged, knowing that vacations were gonna be denied, that uh, vacations would be paid out at the end of this year. Uh, so we already forecasted that this was gonna become a problem. Um, we are not staffed in the event of COVID-19 or uh, if, if the flu breaks out or anybody gets sick. Um, we're simply working everybody uh, eight plus hours a day right now that we have available to us. Um, so that means if we do have drivers calling in sick, our schedule is gonna bounce around from day to day and we don't want that to happen. <clears throat> um, we wanna provide predictable service to you. That's the point of coming up with a schedule and trying to free up some of our drivers to provide a predictable schedule for you so that you guys can rely on the fact that there is gonna be transit service provided during these times. The last thing we wanna do is strand anybody out there or give anybody uh, unpredictable service. We have one staff person out on extended leave at this point. Uh, many of our drivers, as I said, are working 40 plus hours and we have four drivers out on extended leave at this point as well. So we are, we are considering options knowing that we have internal staffing issues, not only hiring and retaining, uh, but we also have medical issues in, as well. <clears throat> so this is actually the third proposal uh, that, was, that was put together on service adjustments. Um, you know, our problem is, is I've got a staff of, of 25 plus drivers on our fixed route service and another current seven uh, on our paratransit service. Um, they're all magnificent drivers. I'm sure every one of you in this room right now can attest to how great they are. Unfortunately, it's not enough for our service. Um, we can't get a consensus on works for everybody. So we put together uh, foregoing vacations as early as this morning. We put together overtime, we put together split schedules. Unfortunately, we can't get a consensus. Um, so at some point in time, we had to put together a schedule that would free up some of our drivers to provide uh, service and cover for vacations and illnesses and things that may be coming down the, down the road. Unfortunately, COVID is still a thing and it's still with us and we have to be very mindful of that. Other trans agencies are facing shortages due to COVID. Our neighbor to the north just had a couple drivers out as a matter of fact. We've been blessed and I hope we can continue to stay blessed. <clears throat> We, uh, we seeked solutions or sought solutions. You know, we're, we're trying to do what we can to make the best, or best decisions on behalf of everybody. Unfortunately, at the end of the day, we had to put something together that, again, would uh, address our labor shortage. So we have a long-term problem here, and the forecast isn't looking good. Um, labor shortage could be impactful over the next year or two. Um, so if we don't have more, uh, if we have more resignations and retirements than hirings, we could be in a world of hurt as a public transit agency. Um, so we have to be prepared. And unfortunately, this issue hits every sector of the economy right now, from restaurants to manufacturing to service, we're all hurting for employees right now. And we are unable to fill positions that are critical to maintaining this service. <clears throat> So that's the background for you guys. Um, what I wanna do is just talk about specifically what the service recommendation is at this point. Um, so we have a, a weekday service schedule that we're gonna mirror uh, between fixed route and our paratransit services. Um, our service is uh, proposed to be 5.15 a.m. Uh, to 5.45 p.m. And again, that would mirror both services. Um, with uh, specifically to our fixed route service, um, we're proposing a uh, half hour service uh, during the first three and a half hours in the morning, 5.15 to 8.45 a.m., maintaining our tripper routes, express routes, and peak shuttles uh, during that time as well that help us accommodate all the extra school uh, students that ride in the mornings. We would transition over to hourly service from 8.45 to 1.45 with southbound departures at quarter after the hour and northbound departures at uh, quarter to the hour. And then for the last four hours, we would transition back into half hour service, again, offering tripper routes, express routes, and peak shuttles. We will also employ north and south shuttles at, four, at 545 as well for our customers. Uh, Route 20 will run intermittently throughout the service day, um, and this unfortunately means no evening service after 545. Saturday service, 845 to 345. Uh, we will operate one hour service on our fixed route. Um, so again, departures from the transfer station go south at quarter after the hour, north at quarter to the hour. Paratransit service will also operate from 8.45 a.m. to 3.45 p.m. Um, 
And again, uh, we won't have shuttle service on the fixed route during the one hour service and there will be north and south shuttles uh, available at 345. Um, and that means unfortunately a uh, reduction of about three hours of service on a Saturday. So that is the, uh, that is the proposal uh, that is out there. Um, as I've stated to the Transit Commission and, and many of the, the staff that this is a temporary change. It's meant to be in place um, until we can gather staffing enough to put regular service back on the road. Um, I'm, not, I'm not forecasting that service is gonna return all, uh, all at once. My goal is to hopefully uh, bring back service incrementally. Um, I know how important half hour service is throughout the service day, and I really, really find it hard to be reducing service during that time. But unfortunately, again, in order for us to, to ensure we have staffing across the board, that was one of the, the changes. So I'm looking forward to bringing that back and bringing some sort of evening service back, uh, whether that's in an on-demand uh, fashion or returning fixed route service. Um, but only time will tell uh, as far as our labor shortage goes until we're able to do that. So as of this point, I've been uh, stating that this is probably at least until January so that we can get through the holidays and be able to accommodate our internal staffing uh, concerns with vacations and time off requests as well as uh, be able to give you guys a timeline as far as how long you can expect uh, these service adjustments to stay in place. Go ahead, Chad. How many, how many drivers do you need to be fully staffed? <clears throat> Well, I, I'd say at this point we're looking at at least at least five or six, but you know, having the ones on our staff right now that are out on medical and three of them being full time, um, you know, definitely hurts us at this point. Um, I, and I want to add that we have uh, we have brought one person back. Uh, that person is not cleared for return yet. We have two others that are going to be going through pre-employment exams uh, this week and next week. You know, so they're gonna be uh, entering our pool, so I'm hopeful that we can get those out into service. Uh, we have one person on staff right now that works limited hours, but as soon as that individual uh, can move up here uh, and be uh, more accessible to service, that uh, he may change. So there's a lot of things that have to play, uh, that, that can come to play here, um, but ultimately, you know, if we get our uh, combination of our current drivers back, and we get some new uh, new uh, drivers on board, we can return service. Derek, Go when, ahead, Mayor. When, when, when was the last time Shoreline Metro reduced services, and what's, what's the implication and what's the impact of when you reduce services and you try to implement it back, that you gain that service back fully with, with ridership? I, I can tell you, uh, well, COVID was the last time that we reduced service. Okay, so. before COVID. <laughs> COVID <laughs> All right, before yeah. COVID, uh, 2016, uh, we removed uh, what was known as Route 30 from service uh, at that point in time. Um, we made adjustments to all of our southbound routes to accommodate the, the loss of Route 30. Um, we also made some, uh, some adjustments, excuse me, to Route 20, which goes to Col uh, Kohler and, and Sheboygan Falls. Um, it really wasn't much of a service cut in, in the hindsight other than that uh, we reduced overall service to Deer Trace. Um, I would have to defer before my time, probably 10 or 11, I think, was the last major one, and that was because of a DOT uh, ordered 10% uh, cut to transit funding, and I think that was associated with a Route 1 removal, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Todd's saying yes, so I was not here for that, uh, so I can't tell you what the implications were of that. Okay, thank you. What, are, what options are you exploring to recruit more drivers, other than the ones that you have in the, the queue? What's your plan to recruit more drivers? Um, aside from recruiting from other trans agencies, which I'm trying not to do, um, simply uh, we've been doing a lot of direct online uh, through uh, Facebook or Indeed or any of the, a lot of the online recruitments uh, that uh, uh, recruitment firms, the typical ones you see on, on TV, um, steering very much away from, from print, although we have been advertising in the, uh, in the sun on a regular basis. I also take advantage of the radio station uh, standing ads that we have on there as well. Um, we've also increased uh, an incentive, um, both an internal referral uh, from 250 to 500, and we also have been uh, now offering a stay on bonus of $1,000 as well. So we've, we've taken a good look at, at some of the things that we've been doing. We've had some success uh, uh, pulling, but 
um, it, it kind of goes in waves. So last weekend I had uh, three new applicants. They turned into a couple interviews. Um, sorry, two weekends ago turned into a couple hires. So maybe fingers crossed another good weekend and we can get a couple more. Another question here, Derek. I guess in, in terms of, you know, if this is the last resort option, I mean, are, are there other, right now we're dealing with a labor shortage. And I think Sheboygan is not unique in that circumstance, that many other communities are in similar, similar situations and other departments in our city are facing this as well too. We're short snowplow drivers, we got winter coming around the corner as well too, and you know, police and fire and you know, look on our website, everyone everyone has open positions. I guess in terms of, 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 of a service industry that we have here and the service that we provide is transportation, I mean, are there other options that, that you're still exploring or have thought or have seen what other communities have, have done? Have you looked at restructuring different routes in the evening, just cutting routes and saying this route ends at, at five or, or, or you know, keep, keeping some or, or making those adjustments? Or <clears throat> Well, certainly we, um, in, in good question, certainly we have explored, um, let's say, hourly service uh, throughout more of the day to uh, in a sense, elongate uh, schedules and, and things um, that I, I don't have the the actual uh, schedule on that. We didn't go very far on that one, um, just because half hour service is so critical during the peak mornings and in the peak afternoons. We we really have about a two and a half to three hour window where it's it's critical to have half hour service. So really, the the only impact to, to put hourly service was in the midday, and that's what we did. So to even elongate it. You know, we would have we would have probably created more problems during our peak times by going hourly service, especially with all the school kids in the morning and the afternoons. We would have we would have simply ran into a lot of a lot of issues. So elongating the the hourly it wouldn't have solved our our issues. Um, I'm you know I'd like to explore on demand service uh, in the evenings. That I think is a realistic approach. Micro transit is what it's. Uh, being referred to in other areas. Um, I know transit systems have gone to that and they have been looking at it as a way to not only address uh, shortages but also uh, shortfalls from COVID-19. Um, our CARES Act money is gonna run out at some point and you know, to create a sustainable long-term solution um, and be mindful of the resources it takes, we can, we can provide evening on-demand service utilizing uh, less, uh, in a sense, less resources. So that is, that's still something I'd like to explore on the table. Um, if we can implement some sort of service like that, we could see that come back in the evenings and uh, assist with not only, you know, fixed rail customers, but also our traditional paratransit customers as well. So th we, do have, we do have some next step maneuvers um, we don't have to necessarily return to the same the same service. We know that's labor intensive, and if we know we're not getting labor back anytime soon, we have to look at a, at an alternative because these folks in the room here don't want to see transit service cut, yet alone a, a cut that lasts you know eight, nine, even a year. So we have to be mindful of creating a solution that we can return sooner than later. Okay, N another quick question. What, I, I guess I need some numbers too, um, just kind of thinking through this process. You know, what, what's the average ridership that rides from, you know, say five o'clock until the end of service? I guess my, my, my question is, you know, we're, 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 we, we, we reduce this service. What's the, what's the average number of individuals that utilize the bus in the evening per day? I would tell you the the fixed route number is is a little bit skewed. Um, we do have our joy riders uh, in the evening. We have students that, you know, just simply ride around. Um, if we looked at the hard numbers of people that actually were going to and from places, let's say shopping or uh, employment, um, it is something that is that's greatly reduced from our overall day service. I'd invite any of the drivers to share, you know, those those numbers. Um, I think we have mostly all morning drivers, but Sandy does work, worked in the evenings for a while. Um, you know, they, they would be able to tell you a little bit more um, about the specifics. But if I look at paratransit, I'm looking at, you know, maybe two or three customers on average any given night. Um, one of our customers, uh, mom was gonna speak before and she'll speak later. Um, you know, she's a regular that rides at night. Um, so we do have some that are, directly impacted by this because they do rely on our paratransit service at night, 
um, but the fixed route number is very unclear, but it is, it is drastically reduced compared to what our uh, day service is. Okay, thank you. That one's a little bit harder to pinpoint. Okay, hearing no further questions, um, we'll, put, we'll welcome public input on the service adjustments. If you could come to the podium and state your name and address, and uh, please be respectful and keep it to uh, three to four minutes so everyone has time to speak. Oh, no worries. Um, my name is Mary Jo Apkenors and 3905 South 10th Street, Sheboygan. Um, our daughter has been a paratransit rider for 10 plus years. The service has allowed her to contribute to the Sheboygan community through employment and become an independent. As her parents, we can't say enough about those transporting her to and from work. As she, we know she's safe and she's in good hands. Um, the drivers are fabulous with her. Um, due to our cognitive challenges, other means of transportation, such as taxis or Ubers, in our opinion, don't have the same level of safety. Unfortunately for Kari, she works nights. And I have several concerns regarding the situation. Um, and I did speak with someone, and I think it was you, um, at, at Metro, but first of all, we, we received the letter on Wednesday, October 20 of stating these changes. This gives us little time to make arrangements for her, um, to ask her employer for change of hours, um, more of a heads up would have been appreciated time-wise. Second, um, I know there's a shortage of workers all over and the job that she is trained to do, she is needed at night. So this will impact festival foods as well. Um, a change in hours, even if possible, will mean um, she's gonna need to be um, job coached again and learn a new job, a new skill. Um, finally, we understand completely the lack of drivers. We get it. Um, when I chatted with someone though, it was my understanding that the lack of drivers was more so on the transit side rather than the paratransit side. Um, I know, I believe from the law that the paratransit um, has to mirror transit, but I'm not sure that the opposite is the case. So I guess my question is, if I understood correctly, and they do have enough paratransit drivers, why would you discontinue that service um, just to mirror with the other service? Um, fair doesn't always mean equal. We've learned that our whole life with Kari. So we would certainly appreciate your consideration with keeping paratransit open in the evening. Thank you. Thank you. Derek, do you have a response? No, That'd be great. So just to address, and we did and we did speak, so she is absolutely correct. Paratransit must mirror uh, fixed route service hours. The, the reverse doesn't necessarily tran uh, mean anything. It means that if we operate under the federal government a fixed route transit system, and we have set hours for that transit system, we need to mirror those hours with our paratransit service. So under the proposal that we were, we were in a sense reducing our fixed route service, we were reducing our paratransit to mirror the same hours as our fixed route. The reason behind that was to um, keep, it, keep it equal uh, on, both on both services. So not that we were accommodating one service or the other because many of these customers aren't eligible uh, for that service. So we would be, I, I look at maybe playing favorites and providing service on paratransit that we couldn't provide on fixed route. So it was the, it was the idea that we were gonna keep it the same on both of them uh, for that purpose. Now, as far as paratransit drivers, um, you know, we, we do have a, a pool of paratransit drivers we have the one that usually works at night. And so if we were to, in a sense, extend our paratransit hours above and beyond what we're doing with a fixed route, we probably wouldn't be uh, out, of, out of service so much. The you know, long-term issue is, is that in the short term, we could, we could 
review it as paratransit, but long term, if we go outside the fixed route hours with paratransit, no longer is called paratransit. And that's the idea of going to an on-demand service. So if it no longer mirrors fixed route, it's not paratransit. So we can certainly do that, um, but my theory and the recommendation was to keep it straightforward, consistent across both, ser both services while we were reducing service. Do you want to change that or do you want to keep it the way that it is considering what was brought I, up today? I'd be interested in more comments. Okay. We'll open it back up to public comment. Please state your name and address. Uh, Bennett Kuhnert, 916 Huron Avenue. Um, I have to really remind you guys, a lot of these people that ride transit have no other option to, but transit. I've requested over the years many times on this commission that hang up your car keys for a month. Then you will realize what it's like for those of us that need transit which is very important to us. I do understand the driver shortage, but you know, you, you think employers have to realize it's an employee market. In other words, we gotta cater a little bit more to the employees. Maybe we have to up the wage a little bit. Maybe we have to treat our drivers a little bit better. I know they take a lot of abuse from a, a few passengers. And you know, if there was a way that they could eliminate those few abuses from those passengers, I think you might be able to keep some drivers. Number two, over the years, I've, I've been riding a bus since I was a kid. And the last like 10 years, there's been a lot of drivers that started and they start out part time and they work one day a week and they have to be available for the other, other five days a week. Now how in the world does a driver support themselves or even justify, you know, having a, a job that's one day a week. I know there's a good dozen drivers that were lost in the last like five years. Only my suggestion is up the wages, give the drivers a, a opportunity when they have a problem person on the bus, kick them off. The bus isn't, isn't a privilege or a right. Well, actually, it's a privilege, not a right. So, you know, if they don't want to behave, then they, maybe they don't need transit like the rest of us do. Thank you. Thank you. Please state your name and address. My name is Jackie Scheidt. My address is 2209 North 37th Street. There was a time in my life when I relied heavily on Sheboygan Transit. If it wasn't that, it was biking or walking. So, you know, anyway, um, I kind of reiterate what this man had said, and it's a, it's a seller's market out there. You know, if, if, like if you want to buy a house, good luck, because Houses are being outbidded. The minute it hits the market, people are outbidding what that house is actually posted as for sale. And that's like with people. You need to offer these drivers a bigger incentive in order to keep them or get them to work extra hours. We have a labor shortage where I work at Sunny Ridge. We have sign-on bonuses that are upwards of $3,000. And then I'm hearing that these guys get a sign-on bonus of 250 to $500. I'm sorry, that's peanuts. That doesn't even pay the mortgage. Um, you know, we gotta give these guys some incentives. But also, um, have we thought about uh, doing rotations to where if one person picked up one extra shift per week um, at the, nursing home where I work, we get bonuses for putting in extra hours. Automatic bonuses due to the shortage. We're compensating these people extra for their time and we're rotating them so that they don't get overworked and so that it's a regular everyday thing. 
And maybe these are some actions that we could explore as well. So thank you. Thank you. Please state your name and address. Yep. Name and address, Jim. Please state your name and address. My name is Jim Cloco, and I would like to say there's a lot of seniors that have to go to doctor appointments. Okay. What I'm, what I'm trying going to try to say to you is, like, say if you're going to stop the half hour between nine and one, a lot of us have doctor appointments that are like 9.30, 10.30, whatever. And now I have to call all my doctors and change my appointments because I won't be able to make it because I have to wait a half an hour at the transfer point to get to my appointment at the clinic or an eye doctor, which is on 31st Street, you know, I, you know, a lot of people depend on your buses and I'm a senior and I have to buy, I have to buy a bus pass for $48 when I think some of the uh, seniors should have a discount so that it's a little easier for us to get a bus pass because I can't afford to get a bus pass for myself or my wife because we're on a certain income. All I'm asking is uh, that you think about all the seniors that have to take the bus, especially the handicapped people and other people that depend on your buses. Thank you. Thank you. Please state your name and address. Uh, my name is Mark Gruby, 13646 Cedar Lake Road. Uh, I'm a first shift bus driver for the system. I've been here just a little over 20 years. Um, just going to share a little bit of my concerns. Uh, certainly, I'm feeling the burn of the overtime. We all are. Uh, and I think we can all share that we are short bus drivers. But some things that maybe concern me a little bit, being a first shift driver, uh, I can't tell you much about anything beyond 545, but I can tell you a little bit about the first shift. Um, there was a little talk of going to the hourly service. I can tell you that between 9 and 1 o'clock is pretty important to some of our passengers. Uh, in the morning, we get the school kids. In the afternoon, we get the school kids. And for the general public, a lot of them like the ride between 9 and 1. First of all, the buses are a little quieter so they can get a seat. A lot of our passengers were getting the ADA and elderly. Uh, I'm one myself. So they feel it's a safer ride. They don't have to deal with 30 kids on the bus. So for the general public, uh, between 9 and 1, that's their time to ride. You know, if, again, I know we're crunched, but if there's any way that we can keep that half hour service, it's nice because that's the time that the general public is using it past our student ridership. Um, the other thing, too, is that uh, the students, we have a really great program with the students. It's just great for ridership. It's working out well for us. But the more students we get, it doesn't help with revenue. The passengers that are riding between 9 and 1, although it's not a big number, but those are revenue passengers. Those are the passengers that are actually paying every trip. Um, so I think that's something to think about as well. Um, you know, every rider that we lose for hourly service might have a small impact, but it possibly could be an impact on our revenue as well. Um, so my, my whole thought is, is that if, you know, somehow we could save um, between that 5.45 and 5.45 and p.m., uh, if we can just somehow work out a way that we can keep that help our service, um, really I think it, it would do a great uh, help to the community as far as the people that are using the bus during those periods. Thank you. You're welcome. Come on, don't be shy. Come on, Ed. Come on, Ed. Come on, Ed. 
Please Thank state you. your name and address. Edward Prochek, 1230 South 13th Street. A um, couple of reasons why I had to come up here is I, I echo what Mark brought to you. Uh, that is spot on. That's our situation. I also agree with Mr. Mink in the situation we're in. Uh, it's a situation that in my short 40 year career so far, 41 year career, uh, generally we've never ran into it in this situation. It's always been looking for money and that you guys, we helped you find it. Looking for people has been a little bit more of a challenge. We have to try to figure out a way to do it. I don't have the answers, but I do know we have to do it because exactly what has been stated to you is the issue. The issue is it is two hours to get somewhere if we go to this one hour service. If you get on a bus, as far as the one gentleman speaking lives on the north side and has to get back to the north side to a clinic, they're gonna get downtown, sit for a half hour, say go to the store and do their shopping. An hour later, they get on the bus, come back downtown, wait a half hour with their groceries to go back to the north. You could be talking a two, three hour trip uh, two hours of your groceries might be outside of the refrigerator and it just, it's just it's an impossibility and it's a, it's a task that I, I don't think we should be asking the citizens to do if we can help it. Like again, I, I said we don't have the answers but we have to find a solution and I don't, I'm not privy to the information that's needed to make those decisions but I'm asking you as a commission to work with Mr. Mink and of course our union representative to do something for these folks. They need it. I'm gonna be here. The schedule's there. I mean, if the buses are running with 41 years of seniority, uh, unless my health goes to heck, which we hope it doesn't, or Mr. Mink gets fed up with me and bumps me out the door, uh, I should be around. Uh, another thing, I actually wanna bring up something a little bit more positive. I think we should look forward to the future too. The future could be, maybe, I agree, I like the 515 start. I think that's a, something that we should stick with instead of going to a 545 start because factories and that in the area are starting that early. The buses should be out there. They used to be at 515. We cut that back over the period of years. The other thing is if we do move forward into an on-demand service, as we bring service back in the evening, I would like to see that almost immediately look at the on-demand service Continuing until midnight. We need service for second and third shift workers. If we're gonna go on demand, let's go on demand and let's do it. And to do it right, let's do it all the way to midnight. So for now, those are my thoughts and my, my uh, wishes and dreams. And uh, hopefully we can find a solution and thank you all for your service. and. Thank you everybody, Mr. Mink. Thank you to the citizens who are here tonight. And uh, we hope like heck we can find a solution that we can do something a little bit better than what we've got on the table right now, tweak it a little bit, and then again, looking to the future. Thank you. Thank you. Please state your name and address. Hi, I am uh, Luann Bemis. 3220 North 13th Street. Uh, I've been a driver for the last 24 years. Um, I agree with um, the, uh, Ed and uh, Mark with uh, many of the issues um, with our riders. I also feel that um, when you read the posting that was re recently um, put on the bus um, about this meeting and what was going to be addressed, uh, reading it, it confused um, many of our riders on, on how it was put. And so um, to get them for that short period to understand that, um, you know, when the bus will come and when it won't, um, I feel is going to cause some confusion and we may have people waiting at corners for long periods of time. Um, we also have had discussion on that um, even though that many of us are working overtime, we, um, you know, some of us may not care, some do like to do overtime, 
but um, and uh, I, I am one that you know probably doesn't care for because I used to do a lot of it in the past, but um, it does not bother me to do the overtime until because um, I feel that for the future there is going to be drivers. Um, you know, as they said, they have applicants and stuff. And I feel that um, a decision shouldn't be made on what is happening at the moment, but having our decisions based on for our future. And um, so also he brought up with the on-demand, um, I guess uh, the general is that we feel that there needs to be half an hour service from five in the morning, you know, till 5.45, five, six o'clock at night. Um, we feel that yes, the on demand, and like Ed said, if you're gonna do on demand, we probably should do it till midnight. Um, and as far as Saturday service, um, you know, there is somewhat of a route um, it has been filled in with on demand a little bit here and there. Um, and that will, you know, probably works out okay. Um, and as far as our, you know, they put up the fact of trying to accommodate our vacations. And it was addressed this morning, one of our supervisors asked if you um, had to give up your vacation, you know, if you couldn't accommodate it, would you? And um, some of us are willing to do that, to maintain service, um, because I am a driver to serve the public, and this public needs us. And if I have to do it, you know, like they said, it's not expected to be long-term. Um, this is, a, you know, I believe will be just a short-term thing. And, you know, I and I know some others, I can't speak for all the drivers. We are willing, you know, to do that. So, um, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Derek, so in your IFC, you talk about working with the labor union to work through these proposals. The chair of the labor union is in the room. Is the labor union on board with this or not? Jim? Come on, Jim, you knew you weren't gonna get away without saying anything there. <laughs> We had discussions on it, on this proposal that's out there tonight for the cutting of service. No, I am not uh, on board with that. Uh, we talked to the supervisor this morning. He went around, like Luanza, and asked people, this was his words, if you wanna continue the way you're going, you'd have to, could you give up your vacation? which a lot of them did, said that they would. Now, Derek said no matter, and I spoke to Derek this afternoon, correct me if I'm wrong, this wouldn't work anyway if we would still stay on overtime because you couldn't guarantee the vacation, that they would get their vacation because there's so many hours work. We all understand there's a problem, but I don't think we should be rushing into anything right now. If you're going to, like some other driver said, to the on-demand service in the evening as an add-on to what we have now to run from 5.45 in the morning or 5.15 in the morning till 5.45 at night with half an hour service with the on-demand add-on, that would be acceptable. And I, I don't have a, see a problem with that, but I do see a problem with the long period of time from 9.45, I believe it is, until 2.15, 
where you have your hour service. <clears throat> now, this don't affect all the drivers, but take, just take, for example, Mark, when he was up here. He lives out of Cedar Lake. He drives in the morning, he works till 9.45. Now he has to wait around town for three, three and a half, four hours, and then start over again or go back home. How many miles do you put on in a day? How long do you think drivers are gonna do that? I mean, that's a lot of miles. Mm -hmm. Or for so many other drivers who live way out of town. So I think, yes, we can put something together. Am I definitely against everything? No. I'm willing to work and find solutions, definitely. But I think there's a little ways to go on this one if we want to put this one together to make it work for everyone or the city, which I'm all for because you need a good transit system in a city, in any city, so the city progresses. There's several things that people look at, businesses look at, police, fire, transit system, your garbage, your schools, and your churches. If you have those all together, your city's gonna grow. You take part any, any one of those apart, you're not gonna have business looking and, and progressing. We'll never progress if we go backwards. We still have to go forward. So yeah, I'm willing to sit down with Derek or anyone and let's find a solution to this, but let's tweak it so everybody can live with it. Thank Ch you. Chair, I have a follow, just met Jim, I have a follow-up question. So if you're, so is it of your opinion that your membership would be in agreement with going to half hour service from 8.45 a.m. to 1.45 a.m. versus the one hour service, give up their vacations over the holiday and move forward? It's hard to say because there appears to only be five drivers yes. here. And the majority and of them all drivers five. here. I see, I know there's more than that. Okay. Let, I can't speak for anyone, but yes, the majority of them told me they would. So and they're willing to put, to sacrifice what they have to, to keep this service going. And so am I, but okay. let's do it together. So I, I guess, Jim, I guess, and, and drivers here just kind of nod if, 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 if you agree with some of the statements or you know, just, just your opinion, just get a general consensus. So I guess I'm seeing that there is some workable solutions that we can have, that we, we have some some agreements in as well as disagreements in, in terms of, of providing service. And, and and I think you make a lot of great points, Jim, is that right. we want to move forward in the city and think about the future. And right. the transit service is, is personal for me. I think a lot of drivers know my brother and utilize has utilized the service. Um, as well, and I appreciate that, that there are a lot of businesses that rely on transit, and there are conversations in communities about how we can expand this and provide more more, more service uh, to, to folks all over the um, our community. So I guess what we know, everyone is facing a labor shortage right now. Derek and his team are working their hardest to, to fill these positions. I guess I I never want to put it on, on, on workers' backs and saying like, yep, you guys, you know, Times are tough, time to cut your vacation and um, working mandatory overtimes. I guess, what, what are some of these key points that you're willing to, 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 to kind of lean in? Because I know when times get tough, we'll ev you know, everyone has this team mentality where we kind of work together um, and kind of bear through it until you know, we're, we're back uh, to where we want to be. So I guess, w how much vacation, I guess, are, are people willing to sacrifice? And I don't want to say sacrifice because it's your vacation you earned it, you negotiated for that, you worked for it, everyone should be guaranteed their vacation. But I guess I'm just, I'm just curious, is it, you know? I, I think that what, would what's, what's the workable factor on that one? How long do you guys work overtimes? What's the workable factor on that one too? You know, I, I hope you're not doing double shifts, but just what's, what's, I don't wanna go to a breaking point. I don't wanna, I don't wanna, you guys are stressed. We have kids, you know, with the school districts, we're, we're addressing that, we're working on that. You know, you have some rowdy drivers, uh, or excuse me, passengers, um, working on addressing those as well too. Um, <laughs> only adds the rowdy one. Um, so I, I guess I, th th this is just as a commission member and, and a mayor. I just I just want to know where where we have wiggle room to 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 come up with a good solution here. And I guess what what are what what is the union comfortable with? What are the workers comfortable with? And then Derek, I mean, what what works for you guys? 
Because it, it seems like this is, you said the third option of, of where we landed. So I guess I, I'm curious, Jim, what was the objection or um, concerns with, with some of the other options that we could work with here? I mean, I want to come up with a good solution. Well, I, I'm just I'm just going to point out that the scheduling is an operational item as under the jurisdiction of the management of Shoreline Metro. So purely putting schedules together and asking the union what the schedule is going to look like right now, I, I can't tell you that right now. You know, sure. I, I mean, you're if you're going to volunteer Jim to do the scheduling, then he can have at it tomorrow morning. But I'm just making sure that we understand what the role is. We put the schedule together, and I'm happy to work with that. Yeah. But to simply put me on the spot to say what's it going to take to reinstate half-hour service, I don't have the information right now. You know, and simply saying that drivers will forego their vacation, I do appreciate that. I know some have said that. My my information this morning wasn't consensus across the board. So you know, it it's great if you want to forego your your vacation over Thanksgiving but not over Christmas, and all of a sudden we run into a hurdle over Christmas, that's where the inconsistency lies. So it's not as easy as just simply saying foregoing your vacation. You know, I'm looking at this from a standpoint that these customers here deserve consistent transportation. Mm -hmm. they're, com they're concerned about hourly service throughout the day. I'm concerned about hourly service during the day. But if I have drivers calling in sick and I've got further problems with staffing, we're going much worse than hourly service throughout the day. That's my concern. That's me talking as management of Shoreline Metro that the labor is a concern for us. And I can't guarantee that we're not going to run into those problems down the road should we stay status quo at this point. However, during some of their discussions, I have come up with a couple ideas that might be able to put extended vacation, or not vacation, excuse me, overtime on a couple of their picks that might in fact put that on their shoulders that if they want that pick, with the extra hours on it, we can instate shuttle service or something during hourly service. But to simply go back to half hour service during the day, we're gonna still need the same amount of drivers that we need right now. So it's a lot, it's complex guys. And I just wanna reiterate that, that putting a Jim or myself on the stand at this point to merely tell you what a schedule is gonna look like, I can't tell you that. But we, we have been talking different solutions throughout the last couple months on this item. You know, I've been really hitting home that this is a serious problem, and I'm trying to address it the best that I can as, as, as director of Shoreline Metro. It's not perfect, folks, and I agree, and I sympathize with every single one of you in this room. I don't sleep at night, and neither does my staff. So I, I apologize that this is impactful on everybody. We're only trying to do the best that we can. And Mayor, my, my suggestion would be to you, as, as a commission, is give us some time to look at it. Like Derek said, let's go back, and it isn't perfect right now. Let's go back and see what the drivers would do. If they don't agree what he can put together, then so be it. But when you ask me how long would they, or how much vacation would they give up, each driver is different. Each driver, some will give up a week, some will give up two days, some will, I can't answer that either right now. But I would say asking to put this on hold right now, let's go back and look at it. If we can figure something out, that's comparable, that'll work with both of us. I would appreciate that mm -hmm. very much. Thank Chair, you. So, so I have another question for Derek. So what happens, Derek, if you um, continue status quo just the way you are and, uh, you know, I hate to say it, but COVID strikes the drivers and a number of them have to call in sick. Do you make emergency changes on the fly then at that point? Yes, that's unfortunately what would happen. Okay. So, so <clears throat> we'd have to we'd have to set a daily schedule for that day. If, if by chance two morning drivers, for example, go out and everybody's used up for that day, we would have to bring in a PM driver to hopefully fill that shift, and then hopefully try to fill that PM shift as well. And if we can't fill that PM shift, then we have to go to a daily service schedule, which is what I'm trying to avoid here by doing a flat across the board change in service. But yes, you're- So for the gentleman that spoke about the doctor's appointments, it would be easier to schedule them in advance knowing that this is the process versus unfortunately getting stuck with a emergency change for a number of days to accommodate driver shortages on the fly when, he's gonna, when they're gonna be forced to cancel them. At least they could plan it out. What I, what I would like to say is that hourly service is not ideal, especially without shuttle service. I completely understand that, but it's better than no service. 
and it's better than not having what we're currently having on weekday evenings. So again, I completely sympathize with this, but if I can't free up at least a couple drivers to you know, ensure that I can cover both vacations, maybe as erratic or as inconsistent as they are, and that I can be prepared in the fact that someone's gonna get sick, I don't think anybody in the back of the room can guarantee that they're not gonna get sick. I don't think anybody in this room can guarantee that, but we have to be prepared. And that's the point. I'd rather err on the side of caution than all of a sudden become disruptive on our day-to-day -day, uh, service. One so, other so solution to, to Jim, Jim, I just, just quick question, then, then you can speak um, and add your, add your thoughts. So, so you say put this on hold, you know, what, what, day, two, three, a week, like what, what's? I would say give us a week or two to, to put it on hold and let's see what we can come up with, to work together and see what we can come up with. I'd appreciate that, and I think we can, because I, I did have mechanics that they would step up to the plate if somebody would get sick, they would jump in a bus. I got a license, I can jump in a bus, small bus, whatever. I mean, there, there are other things, if it would come to that. Hopefully it doesn't, like Derek says, hopefully it doesn't, because he doesn't have the drivers to cover it, but we need to look at it a little bit closer. Thank you. Thank you. For for what it's for what it's worth, I completely support. I'm 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 fine to go back to status quo, guys. I'm I'm here to do whatever the commission uh, wants and feels uh, for service. I'm dedicated to my customers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we we've been in the boat about solutions before. We I, I've been waiting. I've been looking. You know, and I'm willing to go back to the board and look for solutions. But I have to point. Let's be productive. You know, let's step up to the plate and come up with solutions. Because I postponed service one, one time before based on a request that I was gonna get solutions. So I am, I'm challenging everybody in this room. I'm open to solutions and I'm willing to listen. So if you have something, I'll sit down with any one of you and try to work out a better solution. So ultimately, I'm here to serve my transit commission. So if you guys ultimately decide that you'd like to see changes postponed, I will gladly uh, carry out whatever order you guys have for me. Thank you. S just a real quick question. So you chose November 8th for these changes. Was that just based on the timing of this meeting and what you need to publicize that? Or was that date chosen for some other reason? Uh, by labor agreement, we have to do a 10 day notice for postings. Um, and so by the time we came out with this, this pick for drivers to consider, um, we needed to give those 10 days uh, to the drivers to decide, so November 8th became our arbitrary date, if you will. So um, again, if, if we want to set a different date or look at something different, again, that's up to the Transit Commission. Go ahead. Uh, Bennett Coonert again. Uh, I have a suggestion. We have like two or three dispatchers that work at night, and if I understand correctly, all three of them still have their CDL or bus driver license. Why couldn't they be used in a shortfall if somebody calls in and, you know, an emergency aspect of somebody calls in sick and, and, and stuff? I realize it might be a little bit of conflict with the, the union, but I think they might be willing to, to shore up a little bit on this. Thanks. Thank you. Just to clarify that point, if I will, we have one supervisor at night we have no mechanics after six o'clock, and we have uh, two hostlers, one that, or one, two maintenance assistants, excuse me, one that fuels our buses, one that does routine cleaning. Um, so we, in a sense, don't have extra bodies in the evenings to help out. Please state your name and address. Antoinette Corona Murphy, 1328 Greenfield Avenue. I, I looked at the schedule that he made with the splits, and we working so many hours, then a split, then more hours. So we're working, who's gonna go home and go to sleep? So we're gonna be working up in about 12, 13 hours. I, it's just like the overtime we're doing. Except that we are working the overtime. I come in here Monday and Tuesday and work my overtime. Well, you know, it's no difference. It's no different. And I have a life outside of here, we all do. So, I, you know, and the passengers, they're already confused. 
DVR kids are out there trying to work, they're not going to have the access to that bus. You know, um, but it's a lot. And some of us may stay and some of us may not. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Well, you know my name and address already, so we'll mm -hmm. set aside that. Um, the on-demand service sounds like a really good idea. And possibly you guys could table that. Now, first of all, I would like to thank everybody who makes an effort to be employed at this point. It's not easy. We had a lot of government handouts over the past two years. You know, that we're going to end up paying back eventually, I, I guarantee you. Um, and one thing I'm noticing about this economy is with all these places that are short-staffed, eventually those businesses are going to have to reduce their hours and reduce their employees as well and possibly fold, go under. Um, when you cut service, especially at night, a lot of people in this community rely on the transit system in order to get to or from work. And I would like to thank everybody, including you guys who are in a union. I'm in a union too. Um, and I think it's important to look at both sides of the fence. You, you guys depend on these for appointments to get your shopping done, to be able to work. You know, there's no easy solution. Um, I know this is going to sound very unpopular, but um, possibly a, a modest, very modest wage increase for for daily ridership. You know, um, I mean, like cash, not like bus pass or things like that. Um, do I think that it was financially smart? to have free service available during COVID? No, I don't, because where's that money coming from? The buses don't run on air, okay? That's the truth. And, you know, somewhere down the line, we're gonna have to dig deep and possibly see if we could get more funding for these buses also. Um, yeah, I, I really sympathize with with all of you here because you are all being impacted, you're all working so hard, and I understand that perfectly. I'm disabled, but I choose to work. I want to be part of this community. And thank you so much for all that you do, everybody. Thank you. Please state your name and address. Um, Mark Ruby. 13646 Deer Lake Road. Yes, Mark is back. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to be selfish for a minute and uh, reiterate really what Tony was talking about. Um, yes, we're all working a little bit of overtime. I am as well. And I get some of those 10 and 11 hour days, uh, maybe two times a week, sometimes three times a week. Um, the new schedule that we're looking at that would be the hourly service would change our, our assignments a little bit. Um, and what that entails basically is, and I don't have the schedule with me, but the top four drivers in our system would basically work a straight through eight hour day like we normally consider an acceptable work day. The, then past that, every driver past those top four would work a split shift or weekends, which happens, but they're set up basically that you, you work four hours, you have four hours off, and then you come back for four hours, and you do that all week long so if you start at five in the morning, your workday really doesn't end till five at night. So a little concern when we talk about driver fatigue, it is fatigue to work two days a week, 10 hours, but maybe you're only working eight hours a day, but now you're committed to basically being productive for 12, um, if that makes a little more sense how it was worked out. So it's just mm -hmm. a concern. And, and again, um, I know that Derek and the staff is working really hard. I don't have a solution for it. And I, I did actually get to talk to Derek before we had the meeting today, and he said they were looking at things to, you know, to try to maybe make it more workable. I, not having that service, I don't know how we can make it work without changing our scheduling program. 
But um, again, I think it all comes down to everything that everybody's talking about. There's a lot of good ideas here, and it sounds like we do need a little more discussion with everybody. We've had issues like this before and always worked them out. So I, I think we do have a good future to work it out, but it sounds like we definitely need to talk a little bit more about a few things. Thank you. Derek, is it possible? To, yeah, I, I would, I'm wondering if we should table this for two, for two, two more weeks. I'm wondering how you feel about that. I have no more comments. It's up to you guys. And then what about the proposal for paratransit in the evening? Because it sounded like you have staff for that, but we're looking for fairness. Any thoughts on, because I understand, I think what we're trying to do is address a labor shortage, but if there isn't one in, in a particular situation, it feels like we, should, we, we can or should offer that. I, I, I don't have any other comments. I, I presented my proposal for your consideration this evening. So I, if you tell me otherwise, I'll go back to the drawing board with my staff and we'll work something out. So I guess the next, the next steps. So, you know, what, what does that look like, Derek? You say you're gonna go back to the drawing board and work with your if staff. You well, I, I guess you should take a motion first so I know what, what the strategy is gonna be. I, I have Chair? a schedule I have a schedule put together for what we were what we were looking at. I, I can fine tune and critique it. Um, you know, I, again, my, my concern is keeping service consistent. I, I don't want to get to the point where, you know, the, these guys, it, it's great. We're talking today. This could be a three, four month problem. Okay. I'm not, I don't know. And at what point are they burned out completely? At what point do we have to cut service because we're in a very difficult situation? That, that's my concern. We, we can go back to the drawing board and put together another plan. But at what point is that plan going to have to be readjusted, readjusted, and so on and so forth? So again, I share my concerns. And, and I don't, I'm not disagreeing with anything they said. I'm actually glad most of them all stood up and said their piece because they're all very accurate. They're great drivers, amazing people. Their livelihoods are at stake. I completely understand that. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't sign up for this nine and a half years ago because I was gonna enjoy this moment in time. That was not the point. Point is that I have to make a very tough recommendation to you guys today, and that's what I presented for you. So I appreciate your consideration, but ultimately I'm gonna leave it up to you guys to decide. Thank you. And Barb. Barb's online. Barb, did you wanna? Yes. Um, I commend both Derek and um, the drivers for working at this. And I know there's fatigue because we have, the, you know, they worked all through COVID. That had to been a big stress on them with their families. Um, and I think, I really feel that, you know, you need a little bit of time because everybody wants the same outlook, out, outcome, you know, we all want to try to do the best service for the people that live in Sheboygan. Um, and, and I'm gonna emphasize that, the best service. So if we have people here telling us that um, the changing the service is not gonna be of service to them, then I think we need to take another look at it. And that's my piece. I have another question. Derek, if you went to half hour service from 845 to 145 and got rid of, if you went to half hour service from 845 to 145 and got rid of the paratransit service at night and cut service the way you're planning at 545, would that work? Or is it that, is, is there a problem during the day to I mean, if you if your day gets shortened, I understand that there's concerns with the people with paratransit service, but it seems like the bigger issue is during the day on that hour service. I, I don't I don't disagree with you. I, I have concerns over that as well. That that's not one of my favorite things to uh, recommend. Um, I want to say anything is possible. I mean, we can. I don't want to say we can work through anything. I, I definitely think there's going to be really big strategies if we don't look at something a little bit more holistic. But um, 
th there might be a possibility, some of them already said about work and split shifts, um, there might be a possibility to put shuttles in at least, which provide a lot of value um, to those midday customers. That might be a possibility that we can kind of use a couple of our what's called picks to um, perhaps put shuttle service in there, add a couple hours to those picks. It's an opportunity then at that point that those drivers that want those extra hours can sign up for that pick. Um, but I, I don't have the picks in front of me. I'm going off kind of memory right now. Um, I mean, again, we can work through, we can work with anything. It's just gonna be a matter of, you know, how consistent it's gonna be. And that, that's, again, my concern. So could you try the um, half hour service from 5.15 a.m. to 5.45 p.m. and get rid of the evening service as planned and the paratransit and see how that works from a staffing standpoint and if it needs to be tweaked, come back to the commission? We can work on that. I mean, again, I it's, it's, the, it's gonna- I would it's look putting, at the chair of the union and just ask the question, do you think that in your opinion, the 845, 8.45 to 1.45, the half hour service during the day is the, is, is the bigger hang up than the paratransit service in the evening. Correct. Correct. Luann, 3220 North 13th Street. Um, when um, we were talking about with his first proposal, um, he was gonna have, there is 17 full-time drivers. Um, he was proposing to have 18 full-time drivers because he was going to include school routes into our full-time picks. Um, and of course, we had an issue with that because um, a lot of us, the our first shift wasn't going to, he kind of, um, what should I say, to, to us we felt like he sort of massacred it and um, we were gonna end up with less than 40 hours um, because he was gonna be adding another full time and, um, and of course uh, days when there's not school, you know, then you wouldn't have been driving and you might have not had an eight hour day or almost an eight hour day. And then um, this last proposal went from that he was now going to keep 17 full-time because we did have one um, person um, that uh, was out on medical, I believe, um, and can't come back, um, so he, he had to retire, and, um, and, and he filled that position. And I guess our, my thought was that in the past, when we've had service cuts, uh, that usually you would uh, lose the full-time positions, you know, to, to accommodate. I mean, there was a time where I think we had like 22 full-time, and through, um, through time with budget cuts, you know, the full-time positions um, got less. Um, so, uh, with this last proposal, he had it that this whole thing was going to be working, that there would be 13 full-time positions, and the other, you know, four were going to, like, fill in for vacation and sickness and whatever. So, I guess, I don't know, I'm, um, if, if this already what we have is got for 13, you know, where's the other work going for the other four if you're keeping 17? Um, like I said, it's um, through, you know, through all these proposals, um, that's my question on that, so. Thank you. So I, I think I'm gonna, make a motion to have the staff work on 515 to 545 half hour service, no evening service, no paratransit service, and you didn't talk about Saturdays. So that's weekdays. <laughs> um, it, it's, what, tell me about Saturdays. 
eight forty five to three forty five hourly service as it is right now. Just oh, no paratransit. Hour, it's an hourly service on Saturdays? Correct. Okay. So then my motion would be to go to five fifteen to five forty five, half hour service, no paratransit, no evening service and the one hour service on Saturdays as we currently do with the paratransit from 845 to 345. Derek? Can I just ask for one minor clarification? It is the Transit Commission's ability to set service, get the service hours. It is our prerogative to put the schedules together to make that happen. I wanna make sure that that is still vested in me and my staff to do that. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Do you set the <laughs> you're setting you're setting the hours. I'm setting the hours. Correct. Thank you. Jay, can you say that one more time? Sure. It was just for myself and for everyone else here as well. Weekday service five fifteen a.m. to eight to five forty five p.m. half hour service. No evening service and no uh, paratransit after the 545. And then the Saturday 845 to 345 one hour service, paratransit during that same time frame and nothing after 345 on Saturday. And to give that a try and see how that works and how that works going into the holiday season and see if it's workable and if not, it can come back and we can have the discussion again. Can so I have Chad, time? Barb Feldy on the phone. So if you're picking the hours, Derek just said that um, supposedly he's the one that's supposed to set those things. So are we out of out of step here? Um, is, Bar is Barb, that Barb Derek said that it's the role of the transit commission to set the hours and it's the role of the staff and the operations team to schedule around those hours. So that's why I made the motion as such. All right, got it. Can I have a second? I'll second it. Any further discussion? I guess just just the general, you know, consensus or thoughts from from employees, drivers. Does that sound workable? Uh, yes, it does. And it's it only will. temporary as right. well, too. You know, and if 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 Derek comes back to us in two weeks, and I, and I I, I would still hope that the conversations continue between the employees and, and, and our, our transit uh, shoreline metro leadership as well to continue out to figure out what's working, what's not, um, to making sure that we can provide service. And I think that's that's the prerogative that myself and the commission wants. Yeah. Fundamentally, we, are, we understand we're in a difficult time. Everyone's struggling, but we gotta figure out what a workable solution is to making sure that we're keeping service and providing good service. So exactly. I guess this is new territory for a lot of us, we want to make sure that we're making an educated decision. Yes, and thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you for your time and thank you for consideration for letting us up here and speak uh, on this issue and uh, your decision. And we definitely will work together with management and make sure that we will get this worked out one way or the other. And of course, Derek will report back to you on how it's going. But thank you again. And, and I, I just, you know, another comment, Chair. I, I just think, you know, this this sucks. You know, no one wants to be in this situation. Correct. You know, this is one of those meetings where you leave it, leave the meeting, you don't feel good, because I don't feel like there's a, 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 a true benefit for everybody. Mm -hmm. But we're in a weird time in the world right now, and we're still trying to figure this all out. Um, you know, this is this is not something a decision that any of us take lightly. But I do appreciate. The, the transit drivers for coming out. I appreciate the public speaking their mind. Um, I appreciate the work that, that uh, Derek and Ann and everyone at Shoreline Metro does. Um, but please continue to communicate with us. This helps us make better decisions. You know, I, I hope that, that we can get back to full functioning service sooner than later. Um, 
you know, so if you know anyone that wants to you know, get their CDL, I mean, please have them, have them apply. If you know, any way that we can help out, I think this is finding more drivers, providing our employees backup and support goes a long, long light way. But this, this just sucks. And this is not a, a feel good meeting for any of us. I know for uh, folks up here and, and down there as well too, it's, it's just, we appreciate working with you all and, and trying to figure out a, a temporary solution on that. So those are my final comments. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The motion is passed. Um, our next meeting, um, oh, in the, sorry, item, item 3.6, meeting dates for 2022. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, per your recommendation, uh, we mm -hmm. set some standard uh, dates for 2022. Um, so uh, pick the third or fourth Tuesday like we traditionally have been meeting. Um, doing a bi-monthly schedule, so starting in January, and you can see the, the schedule. We moved uh, Thanksgiving week to the week after. Um, I don't know if anybody is a hunter, so we tried to stay away from the week before. Um, Sarah usually goes on. <laughs> but anyways, we, uh, we, um, we set the date, so we've got six of them set. Um, I'm sorry in the last uh, motion where we, what was the timeline? Was I supposed to schedule something between now and the end of the year, or? I think you just have Are we to stay in the course. I until think you have to play it by year and you have to make the recommendation as you see fit as the manager of the department. Okay, thank you. Then that's uh, my recommendation for the 2020 schedule. So if you want to set it and everybody approves it, then we know what they are. And, and if we need to cancel or tweak as we go along, we will. But otherwise, um, we'll schedule those and I'll provide updates bare minimally at each meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the meeting dates for 2022. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Motion passed. So the next meeting date is set for um, January 18th in 2022, unless we hear otherwise. Can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. 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 All all opposed say nay. Being adjourned. Thank you, everyone.